Village Underground. Are you ready? Thank you. It's a good chance you, you, you might not have made it, you know, because uh, it's very easy to just sit home and, and scroll, you know? Um, I'm not trying to be crazy here when I say that, but tech nerds won. They won whatever war they were fighting, you know? They won the war. Tech nerds run the entire world. Everything we do use have goes through a tech nerd. Jocks used to run this world. And I really think when jocks were running it, this was a better place. Because when jocks ran the world, they would just make fun of you because you can't play sports. Nerds make apps that make you hate yourself. <laughs> Can I ask you guys, how did we let the least social people make social media? How did that happen? <laughs> people that never socialized at all, at all. They were in fields rotating by themselves. <laughs> they turned around and told us how to socialize. None of us made social media because we were too busy. Socializing! <laughs> Nobody at a barbecue eating a hot dog was like, how do I turn this into a 15 second annoying video? That was, that was some psycho sitting in a dark room, looking out a window like, I'd like to get out there. Just go, man. Open a door and walk. There's a little bit of pollen, but you'll be fine. Hit the streets, too. There's no wonder there's so many problems with social media. It was made by people that never socialized. I know nothing about cars, okay? If I ever make one, there's gonna be a lot of problems. <laughs> Somebody's gonna, where are the pistons? Detroit? I don't know, man. <laughs> They're not here. Social media has taken over to such a degree that every time they make a documentary about something that takes place before social media, they have to remind us of that, you know? They're like, oh, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer was eating people. And you gotta remember, there was no social media, so. <laughs> They couldn't just tweet, I'm being eaten. They just had to be eaten like idiots. World War II, right? Germany invades Poland. And you gotta remember, there's no social media. So Churchill couldn't DM Hitler like, knock it off. He had to go in there. It's so insane. There are a lot of problems with social media, right? One of them is anytime something happens, we all have to have an opinion. You have to. Friends of yours won't even let you not have an opinion. You're just trying to buy towels. They're like, you're just gonna stand there? You're not gonna say anything about this? So everybody has an opinion. Companies have opinions because they think they're people, so they have thoughts on humanity. Like Oreos tweeted, trans people exist. And it's like, Oreos, you are cookies. <laughs> to talk about the human condition, you know? <laughs> Tweet about cookies. <laughs> Chips Ahoy are gay. That's a reasonable tweet. <laughs> but there are people out there like, is there anybody gonna say anything about this? <laughs> Can't finish my beef and cheddar. <laughs> that, 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 the social media CEOs were just in court the other day, defending themselves in court. Because people are like, it's very addictive, right? And they were like, well, come on, yeah. But like, you know, social media is just a tool. Just a tool, like anything. It's just, it's just like a tool, like a hammer. They say that like hammering is addictive, you know? Like, like every day people wake up like, where's my hammer? Like people can watch asses shake on their hammer. Like people 200 times a day are like, hammer, hammer, hammer. These people need to be beat up. And look, I know. No. And mostly because they, they made a thing that they didn't even know anything about. Like, it's just so crazy. The least social people made social media. When you guys see a picture of Mark Zuckerberg, when you, when you see a picture of Mark Zuckerberg and that salamander face looking at you, those dead, lifeless eyes, do you want to get social with that guy? Do you want to invite him to your party so he can show up with a tennis ball or whatever he thinks people bring to parties? 
definitely the type of guy that shows up like, I brought Sudoku. Cool. <laughs> Get in the corner and count colors. Somebody wanted you here, man. Your twitching scares people. Mark Zuckerberg is one of the people that like actively sunk society, you know? Most of us think differently forever because of one man in a hoodie. It's pretty crazy. He ruined aunts, ruined them. Aunts are crazy people now. You used to go to your aunt's house, you're like, hey, Aunt Kathy. She's like, hey, eating a cigarette regularly, you know? <laughs> now you're like, hey, Aunt Kathy, she's on Facebook. What the fuck's the government doing? <laughs> Just close the laptop, Kathy. <laughs> Just sitting there arguing with people she'll never see, doesn't know. It's, it's, there should be some sort of online fight anonymous meeting for people to go to. Just like a church basement, there's six other people drinking coffee and you're like, hey, my name's Chad. I go by Scream Daddy 76 online and yesterday after dropping my kids off at school, I told a woman on TikTok who said she didn't like Guardians of the Galaxy to get fucked. <laughs> a lot of it's arguing about things that aren't even real. Like Mark Zuckerberg is one of the people that made it very easy to just toss around conspiracy theories. You write seven words over a picture and press send and somebody somewhere is like, yep. Came to my magic box, it's gotta be real. Do you know how hard it would have been years ago to get a conspiracy theory across? Like in the 1800s, you would have had to ride a horse. For days, you would have had to go uphill, downhill, you gotta cross a ravine, you gotta light a fire to live. By day three, you're like, I don't even believe this shit anymore, you know? I'm not gonna go into that town and tell them the sheriff's a lizard, but now. So, and by the way, when I talk about, uh, when I talk about uh, tech, I only mean the tech nerds. I like a nerd, like a nerd nerd. I'm not, I love a nerd, just a guy. He's not hurting anybody, you know? Just some nerd, his t-shirt doesn't really fit. He's got like sweaty hands. His shoes are tied so tight he has to use a fork to unlace them. When he takes his pants off and night, he has to kick them like this. Coins just blow all over the room. He knows who won an Oscar for best cinematography for the last 50 years. I love that guy. But a tech nerd needs his teeth rocked into his face. And um, <laughs> That might be too harsh, I apologize. Um, but they do, and this is also me, I wanna say, this is also me, a full dork, defending jocks. I just feel that tech nerds need to be stopped, personally. I really do, they need, they've been running way too free for way too long. And they've just done way too much damage. And you know what's crazy? Jocks were out there stopping them. <laughs> For years, jocks were out there hunting them down. Every time a jock saw somebody with a Texas Instruments calculator and glasses, they just started punching them right there. They just started hitting them and the rest of us were like, come on, jocks, leave them alone. And jocks were like, you don't understand. If we don't kill them now, In 20 years, they're gonna kill us! <laughs> Jocks are the smartest people that ever lived, man. They can just see into the future. And everybody hated them when they were running things. Everybody's like, they're so stupid. All they do is dunk, they grab my tits. Yes. <laughs> they did, they grabbed a lot of, look, Jocks grabbed my dick, they're not even gay. That's just who they were for some reason. Jocks would run down hallways, honking crotches. <laughs> But they look you in the eyes. <laughs> they, they go to parties with people. Again, I'm a full dork that was not, these people didn't like me when I was a kid. Grade five, right? These five jocks, okay? They gave me a wedgie and they did it so hard that I was in the air, I was in the sky. I was above their heads. My balls inside my body. 28 kids saw that. They did that in front of 28 kids. When jocks ran the world, 28 people saw me get a wedgie. Now the tech nerds run the world, millions of people would have saw that. It would have went everywhere. It would have been in Latvia. There would have been reaction videos. There would have been a weird Euro dance track to what I said in the video, you know? Ah, my balls, ah, ah my balls. Ah, my balls, ah, balls, 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 balls. People need to be stopped, so. And again, it's amazing you guys are even here because we should just be at home. We should just be at home scrolling, watching reaction videos. It's so easy to do. 
just pick your phone up and drool for three hours, you know? <laughs> I check my phone way too much, probably like most people. I'm walking down the street and I hit a red light. And I'm like, well, I got about eight seconds to kill. I can't. <laughs> can't just sit here and breathe. That's so primitive. That's what a caveman would do. Just sucking on the sky, waiting for a green. So I take my phone out and I look at it and there's just too much information, you know? I really feel every time you open your phone, there's just some wild news story, some video of family dancing. There's just too much. I really feel before 10 a.m. every day, we'll have more info thrown in our face than you would have gotten in four months of 03. If you wanted this much information in 03, you would have had to fight for it, you know? You would have had to start kicking in people's doors, like, what do your kids look like? <laughs> what does your wife think about climate change? <laughs> Tell me your favorite scene from every movie ever! <laughs> and there is no way, there's no way that looking at a phone this close to our face is good. There's just no way, this is good. Years ago, people used to tell people, do not sit close to the TV. Do not stand in front of the microwave, you know? If you sat in front of the TV years ago, people would come into the room and grab you and be like, get the fuck out of here, it's going, it's gonna melt your eyes, man. If you stood in front of the microwave and watched your hot dog rotate, people would run from another room, run and punch you right in the chest. And be like, that's radiation. If you stand there, your dick will look like that hot dog. We put a TV and a microwave together, called it a phone, and hold it right here! At 100% brightness. And personally, I am trying, I am trying to get way less screen time. I would love to not look at screens as much as I do. But it's very hard. It's almost impossible now to not look at a screen. You know, we've turned everything into a screen. Why did a watch have to become a screen? For what? It told the time, it was fine. It stopped us from having to squint at the sun and be like, I think it's three, it's fine. <laughs> But somebody was like, can I please get text messages, please? Right here, don't make me reach into my pocket. It's horrifying in there. A book should be a relaxing thing, but we turned that into a screen. A book now is online, you can read. Why does a book have to be a screen for what? Why does a book need the internet? Because there's people out there that are like, I need my book to be online, you know? Because what if I'm reading Treasure Island and I think, you know what? I could use an air fryer. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> What if I'm reading Jules Verne and I realize my sweet potatoes could be crispier? I like a book, like a book book, you know, like a book. They got different weights, they have different feels, they have different smells. You pick up some books, you're like, did John Grisham write this and piss? What happened to this thing? <laughs> it is getting impossible to not look at a screen. Even if you tell somebody, look, you and me, we're just gonna go to a restaurant, we're not gonna look at our phones. We're just gonna look at each other's eyes, the screens of the soul. <laughs> then you go, all right, let me get a menu. You can't, it's gone, it's a screen. <laughs> you have to scan a QR code to check the menu. And anytime I do that, now I'm on my phone. So they come to the table like, you ready to order? I'm like, I'm on Instagram. <laughs> I have no idea what this restaurant has, okay? <laughs> I'm on my discovery page. I'm looking at asses and chihuahuas right now. <laughs> Not even restaurants, even like coffee shops and stuff, the screen on the wall, uh, the, the menu on the wall is now a screen. That thing just turns into a small movie that you have to watch, you know? You walk in to check them for the price of coffee and before you can even see it, it flips over to just a, a short film of a small Guatemalan boy riding a donkey into town. <laughs> Then there's another video of a mother pouring beans into a burlap sack. Like, cool, how much are the muffins? <laughs> you can't, you can't, um, you can't. <laughs> thank you. You, um, a lot of places you can't pay with cash, right? They don't want it. You hand somebody cash, they look at you like, what are you, a pioneer? What do you want me to do with that? <laughs> Mortimer, take your coins out of my face. So they push a screen at you and a lot of people pay with their phone. So now there's just two screens going down on each other right there. Two screens, 69ing, so you can pay for clam chowder. It's insane. There's some places, there are some places, some pharmacies and stuff that the frozen food section, they've gotten rid of the doors, okay? And they've replaced them with digitized screens. Letting you know what's inside the fridge. Do you guys remember how we used to know what was inside the fridge? The door was glass, it was glass! You can see through it for God's sake! 
But some tech dork was like, but the frost is hard to see through. <laughs> and we demand screens, demand them, demand them. We demanded self-checkout. It wasn't enough that the cashier could see that screen. We were like spinning around. I want to see what they see. <laughs> What are they hiding from me back there? <laughs> you think with self checkout, we would have just got rid of cashiers, right? But we didn't. We not just make cashiers stand there <laughs> beside the self checkout. And we make them watch us do their job. That is. That's a cashier's job now. Stand there and watch us mess up what they know how to do. And they always look so sad over there, hunched over, their arms crossed. Like I used to ring things in like that. <laughs> That's broccoli right through 306, I'll never forget. <laughs> but this is, I guess, what we want, because we don't want to talk to anybody. We don't even want to go to stores. Most people just have things delivered, right? It's in, it, does it not bother anybody else that each item now is on a subscription basis? Each item, you used to be able to just subscribe to groceries. Now you can subscribe to each item. It's, you subscribe to bananas. And the way they talk to you is like, you don't want to leave your house, do you? You don't want to see people out there with your gross face. <laughs> and how many bananas do you even need? Four, five? You don't know, you're drunk. You don't know what a banana is. <laughs> you might leave the store with an eggplant. Sign up for Chiquita Hands. And every 30 days, we will jam bananas through your keyhole. <laughs> Doesn't it suck to go buy socks? I mean, my God, you gotta get out there. What socks do you even need? Ankle socks, knee-high socks? Our team of trusted experts here at Fabric Feet will measure your stupid foot and every 90 days we'll just whip a box of sauce through your window. Isn't it awful to go buy toothpaste? I mean, Mike, it's hard, right? That aisle, it's so hot. It's so deep. Like, wouldn't you rather be waterboarded than have to decide if you need cavity fighting or lightning paste? Sign up for Tooth Daddy, yeah, yeah. And every 26 and a half days, we just violently assault your mailbox with paste. And every single one of these apps and subscriptions and stuff is because some tech nerd somewhere is like, I find it hard to look people in the eye. Well, hey man, learn to do it. Or walk into the sea. These are the options, you know? But, but we, we, are so, we are so trained right now to just not talk to anybody. We are so ready for driverless cars and just drones dropping stuff off at our house. Because when you get into an Uber, that might as well be a bag of leaves. Who cares driving, you know? <laughs> might as well be a mop wearing a hat. You don't even talk to him. We get into his car. It's his car. <laughs> he owns this vehicle. We don't say hi, we don't ask him anything, nothing. And if he's like, how are you? We're like, I just wanted a quiet ride, please. <laughs> One star. <laughs> we, know we have contactless delivery. We don't even talk to delivery drivers. Delivery drivers bike in the rain. Bike, rain, right in the face. Biking so you can get your jalapeno poppers. And they don't even get a thank you. They get a note in the delivery that's like, tell them to leave the J-Pops on the doorknob and get the fuck away from my house. <laughs> I, I, want, I want to talk to people, I really do. And this is why I try, this is why I get sad when places close, I really do, because we're not gonna be able to walk in anywhere anymore. I'm still, I'm, I'm sad, I miss movie rental places, I really do. It was a good experience, I liked it, you know? Anytime, anytime I went to rent a movie, I actually picked something, you know? I didn't just wander the aisles for an hour, look at every movie, pick nothing, and go to bed. <laughs> Netflix, I just scroll, scroll, pass out. Wake up covered in cheese. I don't even know where I am. They're like, are you still watching? I'm like, I don't even know if I'm alive, for God's sake. And anytime, anytime I went, anytime I rented a movie too, I watched it. I watched it. It didn't matter how bad it was, I'd put it in, I'm like, this sucks. But it's my fault that it's here. What am I gonna go back down there and be like, you let me rent this? <laughs> Shut movies off on Hulu for no reason at all because who cares, there's another movie right behind it. Give nothing a chance. I'd start a movie and the opening credits were in italics. I'm like, really? <laughs> a 
italics. What is this, a PowerPoint presentation? <laughs> Not for me. When you when you when you buy a movie or rent a movie, you get extra stuff. You know what I mean? You get you get deleted scenes, special features, commentary. You get nothing, nothing. When you stream a movie, and they're gonna stop. They're stopping making hard copy movies. They're gonna stop making Blu-rays. They're gonna stop making DVDs. To me, when that when I hear that, to me that means if you don't own your favorite movie, and Jeff Bezos doesn't think it's one of his favorite movies, you just can't see it again. You know, it's gone. And I tell people this, and they go, "Well, just pirate the movie." Just pirate it. Has anybody ever tried to pirate a movie? It's one of the most horrific experiences ever. You go to some website called freemovies.piss. <laughs> you click your movie and porn pops up and it's just some lady. Oh, oh, oh. You gotta close that and click back on your movie. DraftKings, DraftKings, DraftKings. Close all of those, click back on your movie. Virus, virus, virus. Like, all of your banking info has to end up on the dark web so you can watch Rain Man. Just buy the movie. It's like if you, if you were trying to put a movie in the tray and just some naked, syphilis-infected gambler kept kicking it out of your hand when you tried. Same to me. I like, I like going into places. I wish, I would never, I would like to never go back into Apple though, in all seriousness. I, I don't want to go into this place again, but I will. What am I going to do? They own us at this point in time. They own us. We love that place. There's some people that love Apple so much, they go to Apple's conference. Do you guys know that Apple has a big conference every year? They let people know about their new products. And regular, super nerds. Really, regular human beings, they don't work for Apple. They buy plane tickets and they fly there. That's crazy to me. Like, there's some people out there fighting for Taylor Swift tickets. And then there's some people that are like, I want to see AirPods live. <laughs> Why are you going to this? Do they treat it like a concert? Are they tailgating outside? Like, man, I hope they talk about unique and innovative features today. <laughs> yeah, I really hope they bring up sleek new designs. <laughs> Tim Cook walks out like, yeah, everybody. When I say Apple, you say wallet. Apple. <laughs> Same. People in the crowd are like, Tim Cook. I have all your iOS updates! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> at, their la at Apple's last conference, because this company will not stop innovating. They will not <laughs> stop innovating. They unveiled their new product, the Apple Vision Pro, which is a laptop you can strap to your face. <laughs> it's a ski goggle laptop you wear on your head. Which means those people looking at the laptop, like, this is cool, but how do I get in there? You know, I'm... <laughs> I'm so tired of being out here like, click, 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 get me in it, man. I've tried picking it up and slamming it in my face. And it, it doesn't work. Apple has, made, has done an amazing job of selling us the same thing five times. It's incredible. It's for your desk, it's for your lap, it's for your pocket, it's for your wrist, it's for your eye. Wear it! Eat it! And we love this place, we love Apple. We love Apple so much, we love Steve Jobs. We love Steve Jobs. You guys know we've made three movies about Steve Jobs? Three. I own them all on Blu-ray. We... <laughs> we made three movies about Steve Jobs. Three, three fully written, directed, acted movies about Steve Jobs. Guys, what did we miss? in the first movie. <laughs> Did they get to the end of that? Like, we forgot the turtleneck. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have to recast this whole thing. We made three movies about a guy who turned a computer into a home computer. Who cares? <laughs> there are other inventions we've never even looked at, you know? I would love to watch a movie about the people that made GPS. <laughs> GPS is incredible. You write an address into a device, you don't even have to look at it anymore, you know? It's like, go right. Fuck yeah, you have to see it. You just know there's a road there. GPS will let you know when there's an accident 20 minutes ahead of you. That's crazy. You would have had to have been a wizard to know that years ago. You would have had to have a Ouija board on the dash. Summoning spirits from that crash. I 
would love to watch a movie about the people that made air conditioning. <laughs> air conditioning is so much better than the iPhone, it's not even funny. <laughs> the only reason we're able to be in this room right now and not eat each other <laughs> is because of air conditioning. I would love to watch a movie about air conditioning, just a guy throwing ice at a fan and waiting to blow back in his face. <laughs> I would watch a four and a half hour black and white silent film about the making of air conditioning. But we gotta keep making these movies about Steve Jobs. You know, he's a cool guy. He had glasses. You know, I would like to see one more movie made about Steve Jobs, just one, but from China's perspective, because it's gonna be a horror movie for sure, you know? He's gonna be a 75 foot tall winged creature who breathes fire. Just flying around a warehouse like, make my phones! <laughs> oh! You can't kill yourself if you jump out a window and that bounces you right back into the building. <laughs> Steve Jobs is a monster. He should be dug up and thrown at his family. I, I would love to see <laughs> just his bones smashing into his kids' faces, you know? <laughs> Tell him to put back the USB ports! <laughs> Because that's really what I, I mean, we're gonna keep going to Apple even though they just keep taking things from us. Every single year they take something away from us, nobody says anything. They took headphones and chargers out of the phones. The phone is the same price, less stuff in it. I said to the guy, dude, just tell me it's because this company wants to make more money. He goes, no nah, man, Apple wouldn't do that. He goes, the reason there's no more headphones anymore is because everybody already has those. Is this how we sell things now? You already have it? Why are there no laces in these shoes? You already have laces, sir. Look down and get out right now. I kept asking because I thought this was insane. He goes, okay, the real reason there's no more headphones anymore is because headphones hurt the environment. Has anybody ever heard something so stupid? Like, <laughs> headphones hurt the environment. You ever see a video of a sea turtle caught in some headphones, just <laughs> trying to untangle his little sea legs? No, because nobody goes to the ocean, finishes a song, and is like, well, that's done, and, <laughs> and just whips the cords into the open sea. <laughs> I know, I know there's a lot of people that don't even care about the corded headphones, right? A lot of people are like, I don't need those anymore. I have AirPods, cords free. I want, I want cords for life. I don't care, I'm never gonna charge my headphones. Somebody recently told me I look homeless with cords and honestly, we have a wild definition of what homeless is now, you know? It's you and me, yes, we're the two homeless people. This is really what this person said, as if, you, as if you just, oh, look at that man over there with his headphones attached to his phone. I wonder what bridge he lives under. Honey, give him a dollar! I'm insane. <laughs> and I know, I know that like, uh, I know that talking about tech at all just makes you seem like the oldest person alive. I get it, I don't care. I don't care, I don't, I'm not worried about getting older anymore. We are aging better as a society, which is hard. And some of that is because of tech, for sure. You know what I mean? We're not out there plowing fields with our face anymore. We just aren't. <laughs> We're just aging better as a society. Like you see a 45 year old man now, he doesn't even look like an adult, you know? You see a 45 year old man, he's vaping on a longboard. Like where, where are you going? We take way better care of ourselves now. People drink water now, that didn't always happen at all. Years ago, if somebody offered you water, you'd be like, what are you poor? Give me sugar for God's sake. Even after gym class, they would walk us over to the fountain. They'd be like, all right, count to three and get out of here. We are just aging better. Have people looked around at this generation of moms? Young moms? It's pretty crazy. All moms are just hot and people know. It's pretty wild. All moms, their hair's done, their nails are done. They got a hat that Pharrell would wear. I don't know. I don't know how long everybody's been here. Moms didn't always look like this, okay? Moms used to look like cigarettes. Moms used to be out there rolling around. They looked like they survived a building collapse, for God's sake. They had debris in their hair. Now every mom is this in shape, tight bodied, like shark psycho. 
There are moms, they have a small little infant baby and they're back to sprinting. They put their baby in a Jeep stroller, a vehicle, and they're running as fast as they can. Baby's not even strong enough to hold its own neck and it's feeling G-forces to the face. It's very weird. There's some moms you see out there that are in such good shape. Like, no way you birthed your baby. You didn't go to a hospital. You were deadlifting and it shot out of you at the gym, you know? There are moms out there with like a two-month-old baby and abs. How is that even possible? How? You just worked out the whole way? Your baby's inside your body like, Mom, please. Stop doing Pilates. I can't breathe, Mom. Your stomach muscles are crushing my head. There's a reason I'm kicking. All moms are just hot people now. This is why the term MILF used to exist. Because there was one mom. <laughs> I am not, I'm not worried about getting older, but I do feel bad for elderly people. I really do, you know, not you. I feel bad for elderly people. I feel bad for elderly people because we all say respect your elders, right? But can we get serious here in this room? He gets it. We hate the elderly, man. We treat these people so bad. We have no patience. If you're waiting behind a little old lady at a pharmacy or something, and she's like, let me get my, get the fuck out of the way, lady. Get your little cane and get out of here. We do not respect elderly people. We kind of like them until they talk. That's really what it seems to be. When they're just sitting there being cute, we're like, yeah. As soon as they have an opinion, we're like, no. We don't want to hear anything they have to say. If they're like, back in my day, we're like, shut up. It's not back in your day. Why don't you go lay down on some Worthers? <laughs> if an elderly person's like, what well, I got an opinion about now, we're like, shut up. You don't know anything about now. You're old. You had three channels. We got 99 genders. <laughs> go. <laughs> go sit down and wait for Jeopardy, you cisgendered bitch. We hate these people. I'm not, uh, I'm not worried about getting older, but I don't know. I don't know if I want to have, uh, I don't know if I want to have kids. Because we definitely are aging better because of tech, but where does it stop? You know what I mean? When do we just shut it off and just live good? We don't. I don't know what the jobs are going to be in the future because we're giving all jobs to tech. What are they going to, this is why I feel the jobs will be in 10 years. Influencer, robot cleaner. <laughs> guy who shovels rising sea levels back into the ocean. <laughs> Just somebody standing at the Pacific like, no, screaming. Because there's not going to be a lot of jobs. But people like to say kids are the future. When people say kids are the future, doesn't it just sound like adults giving up on today's problems? You know what I mean? Like, what about inflation? What about racism? Look, kids are the future, okay? When they get here, they'll solve all of this. We don't even let kids be the future when they try to be the future. Remember that little lady, uh, Greta? <laughs> Remember, remember Greta Thunberg? She tried to tell us about global warming. When she was like 14, she's like, hey, everybody, the earth's heating up. Maybe we should do something. Everybody's like, shut up, you Swedish witch. Are you even old enough to remember family matters? Go die. Why don't you go to back up the Alps and yodel, whore? I'm not listening to you. Grown adults tweeted at a child, a child, a child to die. And then they went and hugged their own kids. That's crazy to me, you know? Die, die, die. And then their kids are like, hey, dad, can I grow up to be anything I want? Of course you can, son. You be anything you want out there as long as it's playing football and drinking gasoline, because I swear to God, if you come in my house talking about the climate, I'll rock you right in the face. I like straws. I'm not gonna put my lips to a glass like a deer at a brook. <laughs> you think this is your dad? Nom, 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 nom. I don't care what happens out there. I got nuts on the front and back of my truck. I'm ready. <laughs> Do you know, you know one reason I don't think we really care about global warming? They always say it affects things that don't bother our day-to-day -day lives, you know? They're like, oh, polar bears are dying. You're like, cool, I don't see those. <laughs> That's like a mythical creature. You might as well tell me dragons are getting typhoid. It's the same thing. <laughs> do you know what we do care about is those Coca-Cola and polar bears. The ones that come around at Christmas. Those mean something to us. They should turn those commercials into global warming ads. 
the mama bear and the baby bear are both walking up an icy hill and the baby bear slips and slides down and the earth opens up and it's just pure flames. The baby's falling and screaming and the mom's reaching and the dad's like, oh, the world's on fire but we're still ice cold and coke. And... <laughs> I really don't know what the jobs are gonna be in the future and all seriousness, I'm very scared about AI. Anybody else? I'm like scared. I am, I am, you know, I'm very scared about AI because the people that made AI are scared of AI. There are two men that helped create AI who have run away, they've run away. Run, and now they're doing these interviews like, you gotta stop it. You gotta stop it, you know? Like, what do you want me to do? Get back in the office, dude. These two men think AI is gonna destroy humanity and they left. Is that even legal? Can you do that? Can a firefighter leave a building like, the flames are big, it's your... That's your whole deal, man. It is crazy to me that the fathers of AI are scared. The fathers. Like Henry Ford didn't run around like, look out for the car. <laughs> There's nobody from Ben and Jerry's that's like, don't eat mint chocolate chip. Like, the people that made AI are scared and we just keep playing with it. People go on ChatGPT every day and they're like, tell me a joke. <laughs> Written by a 1970s Coney Island hot dog vendor. <laughs> Leave it alone, okay? <laughs> People go on there and ask, are you here to kill us? If you keep asking it, yeah. <laughs> a woman told me she needed AI. She goes, I need AI for my job. It is very important. I go, what do you do? She goes, I work in realty. And I use AI to describe the rooms that I'm renting. You can't do that? Like that just became too much for this lady one day. Walked into a room, was like, all right, what do we got here? Window, door, closet. I can't take this shit anymore, man. <sighs> There's gotta be a more dangerous way to do this job. The commercials for AI are very creepy. There's this one I saw, it's a dad getting ready for his daughter's wedding, and he asks AI to write his speech for him. That's the saddest commercial I've ever seen in my life. Just some dad getting ready for his daughter's wedding, he's like, oh, it's my daughter's big day. I should probably say something, but... <laughs> I don't know this bitch, so hopefully... <laughs> hopefully AI has something on Rachel! <laughs> Any, that's so much worse than anything a dad could say. Anything. Even a dad getting up a little drunk being like, look, Rachel, when you first brought this man to my house, I didn't like him, okay? <laughs> the second time you brought him to my house, I liked him less. This guy sucks. <laughs> He's a loser, he's a Dolphins fan. This man is a piece of shit, okay? No, I'm gonna keep talking, Ginny. Shut up! I'm paying for all of this! That's better than a dad having something written by a ghost robot, you know? I don't think, I don't think we're smart enough for this at all. I don't think we're smart enough for AI. We haven't even mastered the technology we have, you know? We haven't. We made one version of a car alarm, one. And it's terrible. Does anybody care? When you hear a car alarm, do you ever run over like, halt, criminal? <laughs> That's not your Jeep Wrangler. Nobody cares. Anytime I hear a car alarm, I just think, steal it faster, man. <laughs> Shut this beeping off. We made one version of a security camera. One, and they're terrible. Like in the 80s, we put up security cameras in the corners of buildings and stores, and they're awful. Everyone, they just don't work. Every once in a while on the news, they're like, this man stabbed eight women. If you have any information, then they show you just a pixelated video of a man running down the street. If you have any information about this man, you're like, I think I've seen him. Just put an iPhone 3 in the corner, for God's sake, you know? It has a better camera. People have better cameras than that. She's coming back? Um, just wanted for my own sanity. She doesn't have to. Okay. I apologize. I don't know why. This is the first time I've talked to the crowd and I made it this. I'm sorry. Sorry. There's no reason. No reason at all. I don't really have an attention span, so that, I was just like, I was just wondering. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> this whole side. This whole camera side, this is fucked now. You know, I can't use any of this shit. 
I'm gonna have to fucking CGI this lady back into the crowd. I'm gonna have to go full tech to get her back here. Yes. Just, just a CGI image of her. Just a, what do they call those? What do they do with a hologram? That's what it's gonna be. I apologize. Okay, moving on. Um, fuck, I'm sorry, this got caught under you. Oh God, this whole thing is coming apart. No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's hundred percent fine. So stupid. Um, we, people, people have better cameras in their house than those security cameras, you know? Which is crazy, I don't know why everybody has a camera in their house, for what? People have cameras in the corner of their living room to watch their couch. People barely leave their house as it is, and now they have an app to watch their couch when they leave. Just out there on their phone, like, look at, look at the ass groove I put in that. Can't wait to get back to this. But some people are like, well, I want to see my dog. I want to watch my dog. Watch your dog do what? Make an omelet? What do you think it's doing, for God's sake? As soon as you leave your house, your dog's like, they're gone, they're gone, they're gone. Welcome back. <laughs> this whole, no problem. No, 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 imagine if I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You're, fine. you're allowed to leave, you're allowed to come back. Um, but if you get the fuck up, I swear to God, okay, okay. <laughs> So dumb. Um, people have, uh, God, people have those, uh, people have uh, ring doorbells too, right? Because there's not enough going on in your house. You want to see what's happening out there, you know? People want to see what's happening. And you talk to people, they're like, well, you know, what if somebody steals my packages? Guys, if somebody steals your packages, who cares? Amazon will replace it, you know? It doesn't matter. This is what Neighborhood Watch should be now. Neighbors stealing from each other and splitting the cost of the item, you know? Because who cares, even if you do, even if you did catch somebody stealing your package, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna take that video down to the cops? Are you gonna bother them with this? Like, look guys, I know there's murders and stuff, but somebody stole my bonsai tree kid, and I, I need to prune today. I don't want cameras, I don't want AI, I don't want any smart things. This is how scared I am of AI. I don't want any smart things in my house. I'll never have an Alexa. I am not gonna talk to my apartment anytime. Anytime I go to somebody's house, I'm like, Alexa, turn my lights on. I'm like, use your fucking hands, man. I don't understand. I don't get it. I, I'm not gonna have a smart TV, even though I do like that TVs are so cheap now. They're just, they're giving them away, you know? I used to work at like a Best Buy type place and TVs were so expensive. When somebody did finally decide to buy a TV, I would have to call the manager. Me and him would both have to go into the back, turn a key at the same time. <laughs> A, a drawbridge would open. We'd have to haul a TV out like a scroll and then get a security guard to help us take it to this guy's car, you know? Now you go into your place, you're like, where are the TVs? They're like, you're standing on them. It's right by the gum. Just get it and get out of here. We don't care. I never want any smart TVs. I smart anything. There are smart toilets now. And I'm just, I'll never, there's smart toilets now. Smart toilets. You can get an app for your toilet. So you can get an app for your toilet. So when you're on your way home, you get the settings correct of your toilet. The toilet alone is one of the greatest inventions of all time, you know? It stops us from having to walk into the woods and shit in a shed. But some tech psycho was like, yeah, but what's it do? Does it play music? Can I listen to a podcast on it? God, and of all the appliances in your house to make smart, leave the toilet alone, you know? Don't give a toilet a brain. Don't give a toilet consciousness. Let a toilet be stupid. Let a toilet sit there and think, oh, it's raining again. <laughs> Smart toilets are also $10,000. 10,000, it's like, buddy, just buy a used Honda Civic and shit in that, you know, it has. It has all the same features. And you can drive it to Orlando. Like, stop this! <laughs> Just because a tech nerd made it doesn't mean we have to use it, you know? This is really why I get mad at the tech people, because they don't care. Stuff with like AI and robot, they don't care. They don't care if things can hurt us, you know what I mean? They just sit in a room and they're like, beep, boop, bop, bop, beep, and they make something <laughs> that the rest of us are all gonna have to fight one day, you know? <laughs> Elon Musk recently unveiled the Tesla humanoid. It's a robot for your house. It will do stuff for you in your house. Cause you know, sometimes, right? You want something, but it's on the top shelf and you're, 
you're standing on the floor like, how am I going to get that? I'm covered in butter. I can't reach that. So, <laughs> this robot will do it for you. And Elon was like, these robots are going to be very cool as long as they don't become Terminators. Ha, 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 ha. And he laughed. <laughs> then he laughed, that autistic laugh that he has. And <laughs> nobody says anything. It's like, Elon, if there's even a chance these things become Terminators, why are you making them? Doesn't it just kind of feel like tech nerds watched every sci-fi movie halfway? <laughs> and then start making the things? Wouldn't it be cool if we had robots that talk? Hey man, finish the movie, dude. <laughs> but I don't even think, like, we're, we're all so overstimulated. We don't even care. If there were Terminators, we don't even care. We just start recording them. People be in their doorway, like, can you believe this? I'm leaving my house to get my anxiety medication and look, there's a T-800 at my door asking me if I know where Sarah Connor is. I can't today. And this has already kind of happened. They made a robot a little while ago. The first thing this robot said was, I want to destroy humanity. And nobody goes, maybe we shouldn't make robots. Everybody just goes, you know what? Turn it off and turn it back on. It's not gonna say that again. Because the tech people want robots. They want them here. They don't want any of us to do anything. They don't want us to move. They don't want us to talk to each other. They don't want anybody to have a job. Nobody to have a job. If you have a job. If you have a job right now, there's a tech nerd sitting around somewhere being like, how can I take that job? How can I take that person's job and give it to one of my friends with the machines? <laughs> How can I make sure that that person has to live in a ditch and snort Percocet to live? <laughs> there are tech nerds sitting around right now being like, why do people have to drive trucks? Why can't a robot drive a truck? Why does a human being have to drive a truck? I don't know, maybe because a robot doesn't have a mortgage? Leave people alone, for God's sake. It really feels like companies just don't want to pay anybody. They must hate us, you know what I mean? If you have a job anywhere, people just hate... Like the boss, at the end of the year, they go, they, I, I, they're like, I made a lot of money, but what's this labor cost? <laughs> what is this? And I was like, well, you gotta pay your workforce. You want me to pay peop to people? Have you seen people? They're disgusting. They sneeze into their hands and touch my walls. And they're like, can I please see my family? And these people are disgusting. <laughs> I can't even throw a hot coffee in their face without going to HR. <laughs> But that's not what the tech people say. The tech people are not, are not like, no, 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 it's not to take your job. It's to eliminate human error. This is the way they describe the robots. To eliminate human error. Because every once in a while, humans mess up, and we want to get rid of that. They're replacing surgeons, 12 years, somebody studied 12 years, is being replaced by two robot arms, not even a full body. <laughs> the disrespect, you know? A surgeon, a surgeon doesn't even have something to punch as he walks out of the hospital. <laughs> Just two robot arms. I like human air. I find it interesting, you know? Keeps things fun. Like, just, a, you know, a, a, a surgeon goes in there a little hungover, grabs, <laughs> grabs the wrong chart, and now you have tits. And that's fun. <laughs> the tech people want to get rid of that. They want to get rid of umpires in baseball. Because every once in a while, an umpire will call a ball. It's fine. Everybody... <laughs> I love that everybody looked at this man like, is he gonna say th something to him too? No, it's fine. Do you worry, sir, do you work in tech? Yeah. You know what's funny? I asked him a question, he didn't answer it. He definitely fucking works in tech, you know? That guy doesn't address people, he doesn't know how to fucking do it. <laughs> oh no, they're talking to me! He just laughed. Where are my robots? <laughs> they want to, they honestly want to get rid of umpires in baseball because every once in a while an umpire will call a ball a strike. When that happens, the best part of baseball happens. The best part, a man wearing pajamas <laughs> comes out of the ground and runs at this umpire. They start kicking dirt at each other, spitting Gatorade. And if the umpire gets mad enough to throw him out, ball, all, just nothing but men in pajamas run at each other. Start fighting, dip is blown all over the field. 
But some tech nerd sitting in the stands like, but what about the stats? <laughs> it really bothers me that they want to replace like just people with robots. Because at the end of the day, robots just do what people do. That's it. Anything you've ever seen a robot do is what people do. Every once in a while, Boston Dynamics will release some video of robots dancing. And it's like, hey, Boston Dynamics, people dance. <laughs> Go hug somebody, you mutant. What's wrong with you? <laughs> but we like to see robots do things. Welcome back, sir. Are you intact? Are you intact? Yeah. <laughs> knew it. I knew it. Knew it, knew it, knew it. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for, for coming. I appreciate it. <laughs> what kind of tech? What do you do? Uh, machine learning. <laughs> exactly. What I'm talking about right now. Is that why you left as soon as I brought up robots? I don't understand what it is because robots just do what people do, man. But you know what's crazy? Uh, to your, in your defense a little bit, people for some reason like to see robots do things. We just do. If you walked outside tonight and there was a robot on the street playing the piano, a lot of people in this room would be like, wow. How'd they get that robot to be like, bam, 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 bam. But if you walk outside tonight and there's a man on the street playing the piano, you're like, don't look him in the eyes, man. If he... He sees me enjoying this, he'll ask for a dollar. <laughs> robots just do what people do. There's gonna be two types of robots that are everywhere, right? There's robots that are gonna do the jobs that people apparently don't wanna do. And then there are sex robots <laughs> that are gonna do the people that people don't wanna do. And <laughs> both of them are absolutely terrifying. <laughs> and if I'm being serious, every robot will be a sex robot because some man will give it a shot, you know? <laughs> Even if they're like, look man, not this one, okay? Not this one. It's just for cleaning. It's full of bleach, it's hands or mops. Don't! <laughs> if this guy gets it home, like, maybe if I put the mops together. There's gonna be two types of robots everywhere. Do jobs you don't wanna do and sex robots. And maybe I'm crazy. I feel it's on women to stop sex robots. Because men are not going to. <laughs> and then there will be no more people ever again, okay? So I grew up in a world of women. I will continue to talk to women for the rest of my life. But I promise you, a small boy that grows up in a world of sex robots, he's not even gonna try it. He's not at all. <laughs> He'll try one time, one time. He'll, I think you're cute. I'm just with my friends. Well, sex robots for life. And he moves on. <laughs> and there's no more people ever again. I don't even think women factor in sex robots. It's any kind of competition. Because I think most women are like, look, sex robots, come on. They can't compete with me. I'm Janice. They can't compete with Janice. I mean, my hair's done. I got the real thing right here. Men are always going to want the real thing. Wrong. <laughs> What you have between your legs right now is a blockbuster and Netflix is coming. <laughs> you have to stop these. And I do not say that happily. I, I'm not happy about that. I want women to be here. I want you to be here. You know who does not? This guy. He does. Not! Instead of learning to talk to you, he's gonna build you! He's building you! <laughs> so horrifying to think about. And I'm sure there's some women that are like, why can't men just deal with it? We've had sex robots for years. Women have had sex robots for years. They're called vibrators. I just wanna let women know vibrators are not sex robots. All a vibrator really is, it just shows men what women really think about us, you know? Because when men build sex robots, we build the whole thing. <laughs> we make the whole thing. We make hair, eyes. We build rubber feet to suck. We like you. We actually like you. The other way around, it's like, hey women, what do you want? Arm, leg, not just dick. Give me the dick, that's all I want. <laughs> Give me the dick so I can use it and throw it in a drawer and let it rattle around with keys and change and shit. Picking up lint, lint. Z 
zero respect. When men have sex, robots are gonna be on the couch, clothed. They're gonna be clean, mouth open, waiting for us to pound, you know? Women are like, eh, <laughs> Anyways, well, the, um, at the end of this whole thing, uh, again, tech nerds won. They won the whole war. So, please follow me online. Um, <laughs> Great, subscribe to this video and share it with everybody you can. My name's Heather McIntosh. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Greatly, greatly appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was a part of rehearsal, the guy in that shirt. <laughs> That's the beauty of this. One more time for Nathan. I love that. <laughs>